Hello, BookTube. All right, we're continuing this library tour of these two bookcases that are inside the fireplace. They're in front of the old bricked-in fireplace. Uh, and we're up to, we're, well, we're close to the end. We have, I think, maybe three or four more videos at most here in the fireplace, and then we'll be moving on to a new location. Uh, but it looks to me on this shelf like this is mostly science fiction and fantasy, so this will be a rare occasion in these library tours where things are themed. Not a lot of my books are themed. Uh, now, I should warn you ahead of time, I have a bit of a drippy nose. I don't know why that is. Uh, some sort of irritant in the air, maybe. Uh, but the first book is beautiful. It's this Fall River collected uh, tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe in this lovely edition. I saw this and had to have it, even though, you know, a collected Poe editions are a dime a dozen. Running Press makes one that I love, but it's, it's a big, fat paperback that tends to fall apart, even with reinforcing. So I got this because you never know when you're going to be in the mood for a Poe story. I admit I'm more of a fan of his nonfiction. I'm more a fan of his literary criticism. His book reviews are amazingly good. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I, I do, I am sometimes in the mood for him, and I have that for, for such occasions. Although, pretty as it is, if I found a nice, uh, remember on this library tour we did uh, those uh, old white-spined Signet classics from... 50 years ago. If I found a nice mass market of those, of one of those, of the, you know, the complete poems and tales, excuse me, of Edgar Allan Poe, I'd probably uh, get it, because I don't consult Poe's fiction enough to warrant a book this size, no matter how pretty it is. Uh, but that's another, that's a, a, a side advantage of these library tours, is that they, they tend to make you think and weed out stuff like that. Uh, oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this next is a set from the folks at Titan Books. They did a great, great job, a long overdue job on these books. <coughs> Some sort of allergic reaction, but it can't be the dust. Uh, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll shoulder through here. These are the Anno Dracula books of Kim Newman. All but one. Johnny Alucard is not here. And if I found Johnny Alucard in this edition, I would get it. Uh, but this is Anno Dracula. I've got two, two editions of Anno Dracula with this beautiful old newspaper cover. Uh, and then uh, Bloody Red Baron and uh, Dracula Cha Cha Cha, which uh, when it originally had a trade paperback in, uh, printing uh, 30 years ago in America, had something bloody feast or feast of blood or something like that the, where the american publisher decided just no we're not going to go with the author's title which is dracula cha 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 uh these are fantastic books i have recommended anno dracula many many times on this channel these are fantastic books uh that take as their starting assumption that bram stoker's novel dracula seen also on this library tour is in fact uh doubly fictitious it's not just that it's a novel, it's that it's an alternate history novel in which Dracula fails to colonize England with the undead. And that in reality, in reality, he succeeded. And he is from a very old bloodline. This story uh, follows uh, this main character here, Genevieve, who is from an even older bloodline of the undead. And there are other bloodlines and they mingle with humans and the, <laughs> the books have an enormous cast of real life people from the the mid late 19th century the edwardian era from the world war ii or world war one era as you move further on to bloody red baron and then into la dolce vita into the rome of the 1950s with dracula cha 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 an enormous cast of real life people but also and even more enjoyably an enormous cast of fictional characters that are just the anno dracula ends with a gigantic ball where dracula is set to appear that is stuffed to the gills with with fictional characters including Lord Greystoke uh, and some fictional characters we don't ever see when Dracula takes control of England he quite rightly decides that one of the most dangerous people in the country someone who will not agree to be turned in order in other words become a vampire but who could easily organize his destruction is Sherlock Holmes who is sent to a, det a detention camp a concentration camp uh, but uh, the invention, the sheer invention, and in uh, Bloody Red Baron, the sheer brilliance with action sequences is just so wonderful in all of these books that I'm, first of all, I'm amazed that I haven't gone out and got the last one, Johnny Alucard, Alucard being Dracula spelled backwards. And, uh, and also, I can't stop recommending them. I love recommending them. I'm so happy uh, that, that uh, Titan Books did this, that they gave it this, the full thing. They got a blurb from Neil Gaiman, put it even on the spine. Uh, they gave it every bit of a shot at uh, 
uh, at a second life as as it should have. I just I hope it took. Uh, okay, all right. This next one is not science fiction or fantasy. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, this is uh, by Rolf Baradik. It's translated from the German by David Dollenmeyer, and it is the Madonna on the Moon. <laughs> Uh, and it's a really, really good contemporary novel. I really enjoyed it. It's from, I believe it made the year-end, my celebrated year-end list, 2013. It shouldn't be here, though. Uh, I'll set it aside because uh, I'm so close to having a theme here, I ought to try to maintain it. Uh, okay, all right, this next one, uh, this next one is the same thing. This is, uh, this is not science fiction or fantasy. Uh, this is Tales from the Art Crypt by Richard Fagan. Uh, all about the New York City art world of the day. This was in the uh, of the early 90s, I believe. Uh, 2000. This was this was copyright 2000, and it's fa it's fascinating. If you're interested in that world, I of course am, and uh, one of the most uh, heartwarming, one of the most enjoyable characters to flit throughout these pages is a slightly larger than life, although understated and extremely intelligent um, art director. Named Sam Sachs, <laughs> who's uh, who's uh, steals the the show in every anecdote that he's in, uh, and there are plenty of anecdotes. This is this is a real uh, a cook's tour of the art world of museums and high profile exhibitions and high, high profile acquisitions and whatnot. Uh, don't know, it's probably not still in print, but it's a it's a one of one of the art world regu regularly turns up books like this, and this is one of the ones that's a keeper. Uh, okay. This is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. Uh, I got the advanced copy of this. The advanced copy of this came in uh, in plush velour with deeply in, embossed lettering and in, in a slipcase. I was vociferously of the opinion to the publisher and the publicist for the book. I was vociferously of the opinion that that's the way the book should come. <laughs> and why not? Why not proclaim it to be special and weird right from the beginning? But I guess that was cost intensive, so instead we have we got just a normal hardcover. And I love my advanced copy so much that when I got the norm, the, the normal hardcover finished copy, I wasn't all that in love with it. I, I am I am coming to love this book. I, I read it first and didn't know what to make of it. I read it again and uh, a lot more fell into place and uh, enough fell into place to make me think there might be yet more. But I wasn't in love with this hardcover, so I, I sent it uh, to one of you almost immediately. I think, I think I sent it out that same day uh, and just kept my advance copy. And then I was walking Frida the other day and we came across one of those little free libraries and this was in there. So I grabbed it. I can't seem to be without it. Uh, uh, okay, this, uh, these next two are, uh, uh, I want to say these are science fiction book clubs are in horrible shape but I'll take them I'll take them because I don't know that I'll ever see them again these are a princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs in hardcover uh, with Frank Frazetta cover and I believe Frank Frazetta spot illustrations uh, well any no I don't see them in this but uh, the Frank that Frank Frazetta cover there is John Carter and the incomparable Dejah Thoris uh, and a dead dark at his feet and also the next two books in what clearly reads as a trilogy uh, the the next two books are The Gods of Mars and The Warlord of Mars. Uh, again, with a Frank Frazetta cover that extends. It's just the whole, the whole thing. Uh, this one does have spot illustrations. Uh, and I want to say, since these don't have any folder all on the back, I want to say that these are science fiction book club editions, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Mark at Richardson Reach would probably know, but I, should, I actually should set these aside. Uh, and reinforce them because those dust jackets are part of, they're a big part of the reason why you would have such a thing <laughs> and you've you've seen already on this library tour just a shelf ago that we i showed you i have these in another set as well and there are many many other sets that they were flood they flooded the bookstore markets very briefly when uh the movie john carter came into into theaters uh so there are tons of editions you can get of these things and a princess of mars and the next two books in the series i love them i absolutely love them so i i'm perfectly happy to have more than one set. Uh, in fact, this that with those, that makes three, because I have those the trade paperback set that I showed you a few videos ago, and I have those. I don't have all the ones in that hardcover set. I used to, but I don't anymore. And I also have all of the mass market paperbacks with the Michael Whelan covers, so uh, that's three sets at least. Uh, okay, this next one is uh, an, an anthology by, edited by David Hartwell. 
this is the science fiction century, but really, if you're in a used bookstore and you see any science fiction volume edited by David Hartwell, grab it, because he is another one of those. We saw Terry Carr last time. He's another one of those great editors. Just a great editor. And they're a rarity. They're, they're thin on the ground. A great editor is not just someone who picks things you like. That's not an editor's job at all. A, a great editor is someone who presents you not only with an anthology, but with a, with, but with a vision. So that you, when you enter his book, you enter a vision of his vision of a genre, not just picks and pans, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, and great editors are rare in that regard. And when the nice luxury of a great editor like that is that you can unhesitatingly recommend anything they edit. Because that vision is what gets them their work. And they don't ever abandon it. So uh, sci I have a science fiction century, but he also did a great volume called The Ascent of Wonder. Another big science fiction anthology. If I have a Saw copy uh, at the Brattle or elsewhere, I would grab it because I don't have it. Uh, okay, all right. This is a ratty, a ratty hardcover copy of Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. This was He was writing this later on in life, so of course there's the startling author photo. Uh, that That is not what most of us associate with Frank Herbert. Uh, but this is... I love these later Dune books, Chapter House and uh, Heretics of Dune and God Emperor of Dune. I love them. I think they're fantastic. Uh, I don't know why. I don't think I have any other in this form. So I don't know why I kept this one. Yes, I love the cover illustration, but that uh, I have, I mean, we saw on this library tour, I have all those new Ace paperbacks, and those are fine by me. Uh, so I don't know why I have this volume here alone, just the, just sitting here. Oh, but it's not the only Dune book. Look at this. <laughs> uh, this this is an authorized guide to Dune. This is the uh, the Dune Encyclopedia, and it has just tons of stuff in it. I assume uh, that it has tons of stuff that you won't find in the books, tons of trivia and you know background information that you won't find in the books. And I assumed when I started Dune Tube 2019, I'm doing Dune Tube, we're doing a read through of all of the classic Dune novels. I assumed that I'd be using this, uh, that I'd be consulting it constantly. I haven't touched it. Uh, all that I need to know about those books is in the books. Uh, but this was, it was fascinating to read. I think I have another copy somewhere uh, that I just thought it was so rare to see a second copy that I grabbed it. Uh, it is definitely, if you're a Dune fanatic, if you love the books, absolutely love that world, you have to have this book. Just go online or find a copy. You will lose hours in it. Uh, okay, this next one is uh, uh, Anne Rice. This is The Mummy, or Ramses the Damned. And this is uh, not part of the Vampire Chronicles. This is a story uh, that she wrote about the 19th century craze of Egyptology and the, the rash of... Uh, excavations being done in the Valley of Kings and a mummy. <laughs> it's a, she, instead of doing vampires, she chose another staple of the old universal horror film industry and picked the mummy, a mummy that comes alive. Only because she's Anne Rice, uh, her mummy is sexy. <laughs> and, and it's really well done. I really enjoyed it. I, it may be my favorite uh, Anne Rice novel. I, I think I enjoyed it more than uh, on a standalone, just as, it, as itself, than any of the vampire novels. Uh, and certainly more than anything else. I, I, uh, I think it may be my favorite one. It has every element that I like, including those little flights of invention that she has, that she allows herself in almost every book, that aren't essential to the book at all, uh, but that stick in your mind. <laughs> in this book, uh, that, for me, was a, a, the brief moment when the main character tries to teach Ramses the Dam uh, how long he's been gone from the world, which is not just a matter of telling him a number of years, she also has to show him what those passages of time are like. I, I thought that, that little interval, it's only a couple of pages, I thought it was fascinating. Uh, okay, this next one we've seen before. This is a second copy. This is uh, Leonard Wolf's great book, The Essential Dracula, in which he, it is the text of Dracula, but it, every, <coughs> it is uh, footnoted all throughout. Uh, and the footnotes <clears throat> are not only extensive, but absolutely hilarious. <laughs> they're, they're great, and they're really smart, uh, but when, but Wolf isn't taking himself too seriously. He's not a ponderous annotator. So the, on every page, almost, a note will crack you up, because <laughs> he's, he's not overestimating the book. He's just lovingly annotating it. I think it's the best edition of Dracula that there is. And I have another copy of this, I think, in the little book room. Uh, I, this must just be out here because, I, again, you don't see it very often, so I probably just grabbed it. Uh, okay, all right, this is by Morgan Llewellyn. 
uh, a wonderful person and a really good author. She's the author of The Lion of Ireland, of course. And this is Finn McCool, her book about Finn McCool, which I got, I admit, uh, for the, the trade paperback cover edition, which I just loved. It's so unusual uh, that I just, I got it for this. I don't remember what the uh, hardcover looked like. I think the hardcover and the mass market paperback had ugly covers. Uh, but I like this book. I think I think I like it just about as much as I like The Lion of Ireland. Uh, she's hit or miss with me, uh, but uh, this one I thought, you know, when she's dealing with a character who's right on the border of myth and reality, that's her strong suit. Uh, okay, all right. This is another another pair of doubles. This is the the old uh, who is this uh, Spectrum uh, Spectra. This is Bantam. Uh, they're the their omnibus of M. John Harrison's Viraconium books. This has Viraconium Knights, uh, and what, what does this have in here? The Pastel City, A Storm of Wings, in Viraconium, and Viraconium Knights, and then a bunch of other stuff, uh, but not the Floating Gods, uh, but still a huge amount of Viraconium, and this is, in, this is embossed metalwork, uh, just you, the combination of embossed metalwork and a chick of obviously non-Earth vintage <laughs> hatching out of an egg. The strangeness of that is a really good contemporary cover design. I'm, I'm of course partial to the old, uh, these old mass market paperbacks, uh, but uh, I was overjoyed to see this come to a bookstore. And I just have a double of it. I just have two of them. I was overjoyed to see it come to a bookstore because when I worked in a bookstore forever and ever, I developed regular customers, as you could probably imagine, and a lot of them would come to me and say, well, you know, I've been through your science fiction and fantasy section, especially young people would come to me and say, I've been through it, and I've spent a lot of my, my free money on this, and I'm wondering what's not here. What great stuff isn't here? What great stuff will I not know about if I'm looking for it here? And Viraconium was always one of the first things I mentioned. So I was overjoyed when it came out in, in a trade paperback where I could just take people to it. Same thing with Jack Vance's Dying Earth. When that came out in a beautiful trade paperback, which I don't have, uh, I was able to, to bring people to it and say, all right, well, this you've heard me talk about this. Here it is. Uh, and here's another, another double. This is also a beautiful trade paperback. That's why I have it in this. In this, this is Perdido Street Station by China Mieville. This is uh, a, one, of, one of these is a little water warped. I maybe got it that way. But I love, this is the deckle edges and the French flaps. I just love the, the, the job that uh, Del Rey did on this book. Uh, I love this edition, and I also love the book. I just think it's fantastic. And it owes a lot to M. John Harrison's Viraconian books. That's why I have them side by side on the shelf, because when you read one, you, you find yourself in the mood to read another. Uh, uh, oh, great, okay, this is a trade paperback of Werner Vinge's Fire Upon the Deep. Uh, with an inset of the original mass market cover illustration. This is a great science fiction novel, one of the greatest science fiction novels of them all. And uh, I wanted it in a trade paperback, a nicely made trade paperback, as opposed to the, the little squat hardcover or mass market that uh, tended to fall apart on me. What I wouldn't give if I could see this for a bunch of other books as well. Like, for instance, Star Tide Rising by David Brin, with a little circular inset of the original cover illustration. What I wouldn't give to have that. I don't think right now that I have a copy of Star Tide Rising because all that ever existed was the, the, the crappy little mass market paperback. Uh, what I, I would love that if that were true. If that's a case where that exists and I've missed it, this is going to be an example where I'm going to want you to tell me that. Uh, oh, God help us. <laughs> What's this again? What is this doing here? Uh, we just saw this just the other day. I, all right, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but this is uh, the movie version of The Maze Runner. Again, another copy of the movie version of The Maze Runner, which I, I certainly do not need. <laughs> okay, all right, uh, that's odd. Uh, well, that's, that's it then. That is uh, this next shelf. And with a couple of exceptions, it, it was mostly science fiction and fantasy. Uh, so that, uh, let me see if I can organize things just a bit here. <laughs> that, that will do it for now. That is our next uh, shelf. Now we move on. We move on from here to uh, outward stack books in in uh, mind-boggling miscellaneous profusion, and then we'll move on. So we're almost done. We have uh, probably two or three more videos, and we'll be done with these, and I won't have to sit on the on the floor anymore. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up for now. But I will be back. Thank you, book two.